So we, we were here for four years before we even got the opportunity to talk to the senior leader about Bethel Conservatory of the Arts, right? When we set that up, I thought, this is the calling. Mm -hmm. This really? is it. And it was a lot of hard work. And I thought, oh, wow, the dream, the dr living in the dream is way better than I thought until we started to put legs to it <laughs> and realize how tough it was. Uh -huh. And I actually, if I'm being completely honest, we've been open, this is our seventh year. It wasn't until last year yeah. that I really had a transformation. Mm -hmm. Because- what's, Yeah, what's that about? So I was creating so many messes. I was an absent leader. I was hurting people. Myself and my business partner, I mean, Kurt will say to this, it was a train wreck, yeah. but on a level that was so emotionally exhausting, yeah. I was triggered. I felt attacked. I just wouldn't give my wife a voice. I was so controlling that in 2022, because of the way I conducted myself or the buildup of it caused such a toxic working environment in a church, mm -hmm. bearing in mind. That's no surprise. Well, I mean, it's sad though, really, right? Yeah. No, it's, we'll talk about that we'll later. We'll talk about right? that later. But, <laughs> Sorry. But I know from my experience, it wasn't necessarily my heart's it's desire. It's not the expect expectation at no, all. No, it's not the expectation. Yeah. But I was, every time people would challenge me, I felt attacked. Yeah. I felt like they were ganging up on me. I wouldn't listen to feedback and I would always react. And then I'd go on vacation in end of May, 2022, bearing in mind I'd lost the majority of my staff in my department. Mm. They all left. I go on vacation. I'm in my cousin's resort in the south of Italy. It's beautiful, <laughs> stunning. When I drank at the time, I had a nice glass of wine at the side of me and I'm sat down in this cabana and I get hit across the chest with a baseball bat. God said to me, you're an addict. And I said, what am I addicted to? I said, you're addicted to being busy and you medicate with cigars, social mm. media, and alcohol. Mm. He said, you treat your wife like crap. Huh. You treat her like an employee and you're preaching a message you do not live. Mm. Uh -huh. And I was floored, yeah. floored. And I'm proactive, so if you give me something, I'm gonna change it straight away. I'm gonna go after it hard. But I felt like a ton of shame. Mm -hmm. What have I done? Because now the scales are truly, mm -hmm. he put a mirror in front of my face and he went. There it is. There yeah. it is, dude. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I tried to learn it with you. Yeah. Try to learn it. Yeah. So I repented to my wife. I said, I'm so, so sorry. I'm never gonna do that again. Mm -hmm. Never gonna do that again. I stopped drinking, sober 14 months. Congrats. Thank you. And um, I made it my focus to love people and make sure they weren't gonna burn out because all my staff were burning out because of the expectation that I would put on them, that it wasn't good enough. You're not coming up to my level. I mean, I, I said this to my, to my daughter's year, you will never outwork me. Mm -hmm. What a stupid phrase. <laughs> Okay, I'm using the idea of a work ethic, but in a way to say- Yeah, you're proving. You're, no, you're proving. Trying to prove something, right? So a year on, it's been the best year of my marriage. Good. Hmm. None of my staff have left. <laughs> it was the healthiest year the conservatory's ever seen. And like now my wife is like, I, I said, listen, you're gonna have to trust me because I might go back to old habits. I might go back, you're gonna have to trust me because I've done it before. I'd like read a book like The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry and for six months, I'd be great. Back into busyness. Mm -hmm. And now if somebody says, can I meet with you? I know you're busy. I says, no, 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 no. How do you know I'm busy? Hmm. Don't ever presume and please don't ever use that word in front of me again. Hmm. I'm available for you. So I made myself available for my staff. Mm -hmm. And the certain things that I would usually do, I'm saying, I'm not gonna do those anymore. Yeah. And if balls are dropped, they're dropped. Man. There's a level of rest. Mm -hmm rest right the, the control that we we tend to go after for whatever reason whatever that's rooted in that's mm -hmm. gone and we've we've surrendered to the fact that any form of control is usually just an illusion, illusion. Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden we're liberated and now we're showing up rather than for something trying to act into it to control it we're, we're operating from a place from a place and mm -hmm. peace and rest and 
joy. And you know, rest isn't the absence of activity, but it's a posture of your heart. Yeah. And it's like my entire operating system changed. Like, you know, I'll bring my, my wife up and say, oh, I'm hanging out with the boys tonight, but I really actually want to hang out with you. I never knew what it was like to not abuse my wife. What does that mean? Did I physically abuse her? No, of course not. But not giving her a voice, mm -hmm. telling her that she wasn't worth it. And then this year, her voice has just exploded. Isn't that amazing? Mm. Amazing. And I said, I, I want to hang out with the boys, but I'd rather hang out with you. She's become my best friend and I've never Come known on. that before. I always wanted to hang out because I wanted to escape it. Yeah. She goes, why are you having another drink tonight? I'm going, what do you mean? Are you my mother? Uh -huh. And I realized that was the key component of being an addict. Hmm. I was addicted to busyness because like people saw me on my phone or I, yeah, I can't talk or whatever. You know, my identity was based in busyness. So I wouldn't focus on people and it, but it stopped me focusing on me. Yeah. Yeah. I found too that in my own process of learning to rest, because I'm, you know, my, my hobby of work, I enjoy working. Yeah, of course. If you're going to say, hey, you got some free time, I'm probably going to go build something. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a way of me recreating and creating. And, and I think there's a place for that. Yeah. But um, for me, my process of rest was recognizing that it wasn't resting because I needed my body to take a break. Mm. For me, rest was a matter of trust. Mm. Huh. So I, I can, the, the, the rest issue for me was, do I trust that when I'm not working, there's enough for me? Yes. Oh. Because in the rest, if you think of Sabbath and its origin, yeah. what we understand in the Sabbath is that when we work, we're blessed. Mm -hmm. But when we rest, we're more blessed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's in the resting that I'm not planting my fields. Mm -hmm. And yet it's in that year, even when I take off from not planting, I yield a harvest of two and even three times more mm -hmm. when I didn't do anything, mm -hmm. which in that, in that posture for me is I don't, I don't have to provide everything, mm -hmm. but in my yeah, rest, I can trust yeah. that there's enough for me. And for me, that was part of my, my busyness was I had to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. This is exactly It all it. depends on me. Yeah, if yeah, I don't show up, depends. no one else exactly, will. All these exactly, lies. Yeah, of, all the yeah. lies. And all of a sudden it's like, wait a second, are you really that important? Yeah. Like really, if you don't show up tomorrow, <laughs> it'll is, all is fall, it fall apart. Down? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, important. One of the ways that I play with this idea, uh, these days is I change some of the words around and instead of talking about rest, I'll actually talk about play oh, yeah. and the idea of blurring the lines between work and play because we come out of cultures and ec economies where in order to work was very much connected to focus and being productive, I'm focusing on something. And then we have this idea that that's where we create value. So we call that work. And then we have this other thing we do, which you, we can call it rest or vacation or play, but it's not focused and it's not where we create value. And so we have these two dichotomies. But in today's world, we're increasingly finding that we need to actually learn how to create value in these different modes of being in the world. Mm. That you can't actually do some of the things that we do which are valuable without like losing focus. Mm -hmm. And so we talk about the focus and the fuzzy. And there's places where value is created through great focus. And then mm. there's places where value gets created through fuzzy, but it doesn't feel productive. It's not a straight line. You open up your vision into all the peripheral and you start to make connections be th between things that may not appear connected, but focus is shutting down your vision, mm -hmm. right? And so when I'm working, especially with, with people who are talking about this idea of having to be you know, like, they're always focused and they're always working hard and they're very busy and they're proud of it. And they come online in a coaching call and I'm like, how are you doing? They're like, I'm busy. I'm like, can we just acknowledge that that's always the state you're in? I don't need that answer anymore. Mm -hmm. Like say something interesting. Mm -hmm. And they wear it as this badge of honor, which many of us do. But I think we've gotten the notion of work wrong. Work is when you're focused. Rest is when you're not. I'm like, but what if work is simply the creation of value? What if that's what work is? And what if in order to do that in today's economy, we have to be both focused and fuzzy? Mm -hmm. And so if that's the case, then this notion of rest or this, this opposite of busyness, right, is a necessary, non-negotiable part of being a busy person or a valuable value creation unit that we can no longer live in a world where busyness is the is the marker of someone who's being productive. Right. You have to get out into places where you're playing. 
um, you were just mentioning uh, Shakespeare, right? Mm -hmm. His group of workers were called players. Right. And they worked plays. Mm -hmm. And I go out and I'll spend time out in the mountains or I... I go out and I, I think of it as cleaning my mind because mm -hmm. during the during a work week when I'm really focusing on stuff, I get all this clogged up stuff in there mm -hmm. and I have to go out and just be in the world and I, I play golf, I'll go fishing, I'll go wander the uh, hiking and photography, all this stuff, which is nothing more than something to keep me busy while I'm just getting fuzzy. But I, th I think that has become a necessary part of work. When you're doing work that is creative, mm -hmm. requires innovation, mm -hmm. you got to get unfocused. Mm. And when we're carrying around our badge of honor of I'm just so busy and I'm always focused and I'm always being productive, I'm like, mm -hmm. that's not the best way to create value anymore. Or unless play is great value and you can be focused in your play. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know Sometimes what I mean? your ideas show up there unexpectedly. Oh, yeah. we, we, I do a bit all the time where I... I, I uh, I've probably written about this, I don't know how many times, but I'll say, you know, when people say they do their best thinking in the shower, I will immediately respond, well, you should clearly take more showers. Mm. <laughs> but that doesn't, that, that's the natural and obvious byproduct of the statement, I do my best thinking in the mm -hmm. showers, but that's not what people are trying to communicate. Mm -hmm. It's like this magical, weird thing happened in the shower. Mm -hmm. But the shower is one of the only places that busy people get completely naked. Mm -hmm. They lose all their tech. Have you ever noticed how we will not mm -hmm. let tech in the shower? Mm -hmm. And we could. There's no mm, technical yeah. reason not to, except it's a sacred place. We get warm. We get wet. We are alone for the mm -hmm, most part. Mm -hmm. And we come down. Mm -hmm. And we get fuzzy. And suddenly, we do our best thinking. Mm -hmm.